Well, hi there. This is a Bushmaster, the longest venomous snake in the Americas and the longest viper in the world. And being a giant viper, it is capable of delivering a fast, accurate, long range, and extremely deadly bite. And it wouldn't be a pretty death, like the one you would experience if you were bitten by something as innocent as a black mamba or a king cobra. This would be a horrible death, in which your body would be literally dissolving away from the inside out as your nervous system simultaneously begins to malfunction and shut down. And just last year, I was blessed to be part of a team that found three of these incredible snakes deep in the Peruvian Amazon, including the largest they had found at that location for decades. And I walked away absolutely enamored with these incredible snakes. They have got to be one of the most awesome, intimidating, and delightful animals in existence. I already told you that they're huge. This one is actually still very young. Bushmasters over three meters are not uncommon at all, and the longest on record was almost 12 feet long. But that really isn't my favorite thing about them. It might not even be their glorious coloration, and they are arguably the prettiest of all snakes. For me, Two things about these snakes absolutely made me fall in love with the Bushmaster. First, they have spikes down their backs like dragons. And that culminates with a hard spike at the end of the tail that I first felt on this very snake a few years ago when I came down to visit Chandler with my family. You know, since David snubbed Chandler's Bushmasters when we came down with him to visit. Dave is the only Bushmaster snob that I know. Let me... Yeah, David! <laughs> but my favorite thing about these snakes is their disposition. In the Amazon, we caught three of these amazing snakes. We caught them, put them in bags, got them out of the bags, surrounded them and photographed them and filmed them, handled them. The largest one we tubed and measured. We put them back into bags, brought them to the exact locations where they were originally found and released them. And at no point did they show even the slightest hint of aggression. They were delightful and somehow much more intimidating. Because where we were, had we been bitten, a bite would have almost certainly been fatal. And these snakes were big and fast enough to bite us well above the boots that protected us from almost all other venomous snakes that we might have encountered. And yet they seemed unconcerned with all that we were doing to them. Like that old guy sitting at the bar being picked on by a group of young punks who hardly even looks at them, speaks quietly, just letting them know that they might want to pick another activity. You don't know exactly what it would take to set him off or how bad it would be if you did, but the confident look in his eye lets you know that he could totally handle this situation if he needed to. And he's only letting you live because he isn't in the mood to kill you. A snake that becomes defensive and starts striking well before you're close enough to reach it, honestly, is not very scary. It lets you know exactly what it would take to set it off, and you know just how far away you need to be to remain safe. I still don't know exactly what these snakes can do. And are they actually uninclined to bite, or are they just waiting for me to get just a little too close before they uncork everything? Well, today I'm here at Chandler's Wild World in Florida to be reunited with the first Bushmaster I ever touched, and to find out if the Bushmaster is a good pet. And is it the best pet snake for me? I'm gonna guess that it isn't, but I kind of want to be wrong about that because I adore these snakes. So we're gonna have to give it a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Bushmaster a score of one out of five. And for the record, that is about as high of a score as we're ever going to give to a snake that can kill you dead in very little time, especially if it's gonna melt your body to do it. And it happens to be a snake that is long enough that it becomes difficult to handle even with proper tools. The only reason that they don't get a zero is that personality and the fact that they are not the fastest of snakes, except when they strike. You see, the Bushmaster is basically just a stretched out rattlesnake with no rattle and that lays eggs, unlike all of the other New World pit vipers. They are an ambush predator, like a gaboon viper. They will just sit in one place, absolutely still, for really long periods of time until something edible, usually a small mammal, but also birds and other reptiles, and then out of the calm, 
comes an explosion. One fast precision guided strike. These are, as I just mentioned, a pit viper. That means that they have two long movable fangs that can swivel until they're pointed almost forward. That makes it much more likely that they make it into their target than is the case for most fixed fanged elapids. It also means that they can be much longer since they can fold so that they point towards the rear of the throat instead of into the lower jaw. And those pits, called loreal heat pits, as they appear on the loreal scale as opposed to the labial pits on boas and pythons, those detect infrared light. And infrared light is emitted by almost everything warm, so they effectively see heat. Even on the darkest night under the canopy of the Amazon rainforest, they can still see you. And whereas snakes like cobras strike relatively slowly, the pit vipers strike quickly. And generally, the longer their bodies, the farther they can strike. Well, this is the longest one. You can do the math. The venom, as we mentioned earlier, is bad. Bites happen rarely enough that we don't know exactly how bad, but a very high percentage of people bitten in the field die. We did a whole video on snake venom, but this venom includes both neurotoxins and cytotoxins. So it paralyzes you, stops your breathing and your heart, and melts away your body all at the same time. Sounds lovely. But I have handled these in Peru. It is not easy due to their size, but they make it as easy as they can. It's like handling a placid, spiky boa using a huge snake hook, but that could send you to the coroner if you make a mistake. And it can be easy to forget or even not know exactly what this snake can do. I was recently bitten by my female rainbow boa because I underestimated what she could do. I'm just thankful that my arm didn't dissolve away as my blood started to seep out of my veins into the rest of my body and my heart stopped. But again, handling is not hard, it's just much, much more dangerous than it seems. When it comes to both care and hardiness, I'm going to turn the time over to Chandler. Not that many people keep these snakes and very few do so successfully. And I'll give them a score once I've heard what he has to say. So, you want to keep a Bushmaster? Well, you're in over your head because this does not make a good pet. This is the most notorious viper in the world of venomous snakes. This snake can get 12 feet long, as Clint said. That means it's got a crazy strike range. And their feeding response, like most snakes in captivity, is very intense. This snake will not just shoot out with a feeding response, but also when it extends with that long coil, it can probe forward even more. So they shoot out and then they rush forward even more. And I know people who have fed these snakes, they jump onto a rat, they bite it, and they're like, let me get a pick of it. The snake goes Bleh! and shoots out and just gets them. I know a guy who nearly died from one of these snakes and all he got was one fang in the finger. There's an 85 to 95% fatality rate for the bite of this snake. Not just to say, its scientific name translates to silent death. They're not too easy to keep in captivity either. The snake lives in the rainforest, so it has to be kept cool. You can actually, ooh, this one's upset. She has a modified thorn at the tip of her tail, and she's rattling it right now, which is similar to a rattlesnake letting me know she's upset. And usually she's not upset, but I'm moving too much, and my heat signature is off the Richter scale for her. See how she's looking at me right now? She's very upset. I'm being too loud. I'm sorry, honey. Ooh, she's upset now. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on. She doesn't like it. The Bushmaster, they live in the cool rainforest. Temperatures are very important. If this snake lives in a room that starts to go into the mid to high 80s, it will cook and die like an eyelash viper. They must be kept cool. Also, believe it or not, even though they're from the Amazon, which is a pretty wet place, these animals can get what's called red belly. It's a fungal infection where their belly turns red from being in too moist of an environment and they'll die. So these snakes have to be kept on either dry cocoa bark or a paper towel, dry substrate. And when you want to give them moisture, when you want to spray them or soak them, they must be taken out of their enclosure, put in a separate area and sprayed down so they can drink similar to how they would drink in the wild. These animals, even though they're in the rainforest, they will find dry areas to sleep sleep at night so they don't get this red belly, this fungal infection that will kill them. Not just is it difficult to safely keep the snake, this snake requires very specific habitat. Ooh, she's not happy. Ooh, she's yeah, not speed. having it. Not having it today. She's a sweet girl. So for her to be doing this says a lot. 
and she's not even that big of a snake. She's probably about like a five foot long snake stretched out, but she can shoot right up and bite you in the face if she was on the ground. I'm sorry, mama. It's a good thing there's a screen there because she'd be latched on me if, if, there, oh, if there wasn't. So, to conclude, the Bushmaster does not make a good pet. And to say the least, no venomous snake makes a good pet. How hardy are the snakes? Well, like I said, if you don't know what you're doing with the snake, you can easily kill it with temperature and the environment it's kept in. If you do know what you're doing, you can be very successful, but a lot of these animals are wild caught. Best thing to do is get a captive bred animal, but no matter what, it doesn't change to the fact that their venom will put you in a coffin. All right, thank you so much, Chandler. I, I think Based on what you had to say to me, uh, we're going to give the Bushmaster a score of 2 out of 5 for care and 2 out of 5 for hardiness. And that's even assuming you get one captive bred. It's going to be lower if you get one wild caught. And a lot of them that you'll see for sale are wild caught. There just aren't that many breeders of these snakes. Which is why, when it comes to availability, we give the Bushmaster a score of 1 out of 5. To be honest, I almost gave them a zero. The truth is that you can get them, but most of them that you will see for sale are field collected. Wild caught Bushmasters are a terrible idea, not only because they can kill you terribly, but because they are extremely unlikely to survive. And removing Bushmasters from the wild could threaten their existence in the wild and they're already dealing with enough. The last thing you want to do, I would think, would be to spend thousands of dollars to remove an amazing animal from the wild just so you can watch it die. This is all of the problems of getting a dragon snake, but you'll need an even bigger jar, and there is some possibility that it will kill you. So you're gonna need a really big jar, and if you don't know what I'm talking about with all of this jar talk, you should probably watch our video on dragon snakes. Bushmasters have been bred in captivity, several different species now, so it is technically possible to get one captive bred, and that is why they get a one and not a zero. If you see one that isn't a fresh hatchling, because these do lay eggs, unlike all of the other American vipers, expect it to be an import. Find a breeder if you can, and if you can't, keep looking. If you're buying a Bushmaster as an impulse buy, you are probably breaking the law and making a host of other seriously bad decisions anyway. When it comes to upfront costs, the highest cost will likely be the snake itself. It will cost thousands of dollars. And that's fine because that will probably keep a lot of people from getting one. Of course, if you're looking for a budget-friendly way to melt your flesh and die from the bite of one of the largest and most beautiful vipers in the world, you could get a Gaboon Viper or an Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake for a lot less money. And they'll be more likely to survive and less likely to kill you, though you may lose an arm or something. And you could die. But if it has to be a Bushmaster, then expect to pay many thousands of dollars for the snake. Toad Ranch sells some excellent enclosures for snakes like this at fairly reasonable prices. You'll need heat tape or a radiant heat panel on a thermostat, door locks, a big water bowl, hides, proper handling equipment, and the proper licenses. And that is why overall we give the Bushmaster a 1.6 out of 5. That's not the right pet snake for me. Honestly, it's probably not the best pet snake for anyone. It is all that is bad about keeping a Gaboon Viper and a Dragon Snake all wrapped into one package. And honestly, this is pretty much what I think you would get if a Dragon Snake and a Gaboon Viper had a baby. And it was the size of a boa. I mean, it has giant fangs, horrifying venom, spikes down its back, a laid back personality, a beautiful pattern, and likes to die in captivity. And if a giant dragon viper is the only snake that you want, and you are willing to wait to find a breeder, and you're okay with the idea of melting from the inside out, then the Bushmaster might be the perfect pet snake for you. But I certainly wouldn't recommend it. Go see them in the wild instead. We'll actually have a link to how you can do that. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, Bushmaster! <laughs> <laughs> so you want to learn about the Bushmaster. In here. <laughs> All right. They didn't want me for Coyote Peterson's show, but I'm here yeah. in Clint's show. I'm about to go into the bite. The strike zone. <laughs> the bite zone. Awesome. This is cool. It was really nice to see one get upset. And I, I totally understand why it's upset. It's very rattlesnake-like. 
Um, but it, you know, it's, it's nice to see a little bit of what it looks like. Like I think if you're going to get bitten, it's going to be a feeding response generally. If you're getting bitten from this, you're an idiot, right? Like you have decided, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about, I mean, everything you're telling me right now, you are rattling, you're standing up, you're coiled. Like clearly this snake feels threatened. And if you're reaching at it anyway, like, yeah, you know, you probably weren't meant for life. It just wasn't a thing you were supposed to have. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah, that is, that is a Darwin Award right there. And, and yep, yep. Uh. Listen to that. Did you know Bushmaster's rattled? You've never seen one grumpy before. You know what this explains to me in its entirety? The spike at the end of the tail and the spikes on the back. Because it's rubbing the tail spike on the back spikes to make that noise. How cool is that?